Hi guys, Mr. John here and first thing first I want to ask you how do you like this camera angle? I was inspired by big class videos and uh, leave your opinion in the comment below but this video is about a device which I like very much. I don't know about you but I like soldering guns, they heat up really fast and they have a lot of power which allows you to solder to huge polygons and whatnot. And actually some time ago I saw a video about a battery powered soldering gun. It used a ZVS driver for it. The video is in Russian, but I'm gonna still link it down in description. You may not understand what the chap is saying, but you will still go be, gonna be able to see how my implementation is different from his. He you no straight to the scene. He used the 18650 cell and he claims that his um, power consumption is 40 watts. I did a few calculations and I said no, I don't like that. Too high current. First of all, you're using simply lithium ion cell, so you're gonna need a logic level gate. That's just kinda pesky to find. I decided to use a 12 volt battery instead because I have a few laying around. And uh, in my case, it had, um, the power came out to be 25 watts, which is kind of low, but actually the thing proving itself useful even with this power. So, here it is. That's my soldering gun, ZVS soldering gun. As you can see here, it is embedded in a bottle in a plastic bottle, which is cheap ass way to do it, but nonetheless it works. And uh, to be honest with you, yes it is crude implementation, but I'm gonna tell you what, this thing is surprisingly comfortable to hold in hand, this bottle is very ergonomic for what it is. So inside you can see the board itself, okay, here you can see the ferrite core, and the ferrite core is nothing else than a huge ferrite bead, you will find on VGA cables and whatnot. You will find a fat section of a cable, usually near to a plug, where near the VGA plug, VGA connector I meant. And that is what it is. It is a ferrite core, effectively a toroid, a very deep toroid, <laughs> long one. So you can see the primary here consisting of, it looks like six wires, but it's actually uh, three wires. Three wires, 12 turns, center tapped. And that green stuff is the secondary. It's only one turn, it passes through the core once, but it consists of 25 wires, because there is a very high current on the output. 25 half millimeter in diameter magnet wires, that's what it is. Inside you can also see the switches, resonant cap tucked inside there, a choke, which is about 100 microhenries, resonant cap is 470 nanofarads, transistors are IRF 3710s, and the another schematic is pretty straightforward. And that chap did a great job coming up with an idea, but then he messed up in a way that he used a beefy switch to turn it on and off. And I'm using only a tactile switch, as you can see, very low cost, very inexpensive and stuff like that. So how am I... And this thing is 25 watts, 20, 12 volts, so that's about 2 amps. How am I able to switch the scene on and off with a tactile push button? Well, it's not necessary to switch the power. I put a switch in a gate circuits. Okay, so that's about it. Here you can see the LED, it's a work light. This is nothing else than a connector which comes in a strip used very often in electrical work uh, to wire mains and whatnot. Let me show you the schematic right now, okay? And then I'm gonna show you how, it, how good it's so, how good um, it is to solder with this stuff. It is surprisingly good for the power. Okay. So that's the schematic for it. As you can see it's a regular ZVS actually, ZVS arrangement. 
Uh, primary is a 12 torn center tapped, consisting of three wires in parallel. Those wires are 0.6 millimeters in diameter. Secondary, as I mentioned already, is 25 wires in parallel, twisted together to form a Litz wire. And those wires are half millimeters in diameter. The resonant cap must be a film type, preferably MKP or something like that, because it has to work at a quite a large reactive power. Switches are IRF 3710s. You can see the pull down resistors. And having those pull down resistors makes sure that I can use the button here. And when the button is open, this resistor discharge the gate, so this thing consumes zero current. If they weren't there, some stuff, some actually some strays, some noise might be might get picked up and might turn the transistor on and cause problems. So pull down resistors definitely handy. Here you can see the work light, which is an LED and nothing else. The chalk is hundred microhenries. So that's about it. Let's now see how to solder with it. The thing heats up very fast. By the way, the tip is actually 0.6 millimeter wire. It is completely cold, as you can see. And I'm gonna grab a bit of solder. It is quite cold here, so keep in mind. I'm gonna put it like that. I'm gonna press it in. Press the button and uh, you count for yourself how fast it heats up. See, already, it's molten. A bit of solder on the table, which is not... Still hot. Yikes. But, let's desolder something with it. Okay. It heats up very fast and it cools, cools down very fast, as you can see. Let's desolder a resistor, okay? This 8 watt resistor. The thing will struggle on a high thermal mass components and tracks, but using it's quite satisfi it's quite satisfying to use on a small boards. Okay, so that's when one end free. And the other end is free. As you can see the resistor is right here. Now let's desolder a capacitor. It is a lead-free solder here, so yeah. The tip reaches a high temperature quite fast, so lead-free solder is not a problem for this thing. Okay, the parts are out. And of course, if it can desolder, it can solder, because desoldering is a bit more tricky than soldering. Okay, so that's that, guys. Leave your opinions about this camera angle in the comments and uh, thanks for watching. See ya.